Well, hello. Hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa to, coming to you live from the Top Drawer RVA. It is Wednesday. It is 3 p.m. and this is my scheduled time to come hang out and play with some paint. So I thought I would sit on the floor and I have my little puppy. She's kind of snuggled up here in the corner. We're going to have a little chat and we're going to talk about what we're going to paint today. So how are you? How's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing well. Um, I kind of have a two-part series that we're going to start today and I hope that you'll be able to join me next week at the same time because there's some fun and exciting stuff happening. Fun and exciting stuff. So today we are going to start this little chest. Um, I don't really know what it is other than like a decorative box but it was super cute and I had to buy it because I knew I could like really zhuzh it up and do fun and fancy things to it. So today we are going to do an ombre blend. We're going to sit on the floor and paint with some blues and some greens and then what this is going to be is my base for next week and next week you are going to get to see all of the new mooses. I have got all of the new mooses on the floor and next week we're going to get together and we are going to play with all the new mooses and decorate this tiny box so that you can see how to use Dixie Belle's newest product because this is coming soon. This will be released November 5th to Premier Retailers and I want everybody to learn all about it and know how to use it and I think it's fun and fabulous. It's very sparkly, it's very glittery, it's very me. So today we are going to paint this tiny box and we are going to get it beautiful and then I'm going to put it aside and next week we're going to get together at the same time, same place. You're going to come back and join me, all right? Come back and join me. We are going to stick some Would You Bend on here next week and then we're going to jump into all the new mousse, the new waxes, and you're going to get to see all of the things. I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's newest stencils, which are fabulous, and we're going to get glittery and shiny. All right, so let's start the beginning part of this process. Let's start the paint process today and get this show on the road, shall we? Great, good, let's do it. So you can see my little hanging on right here, this little girl. So since quarantine started, my dog has decided that I'm her security blanket and she just can't be away from me. So if you hear strange puppy noises, it's just her sitting on the floor, hanging out, wanting to be part of the paint show. She usually has it on her somewhere and she will, she will be right beside me. So I hope you're a puppy lover because I am. <laughs> and they join me with everything that I do. So I apologize in advance if she's noisy. All right, let's do this, shall we? Let's get the show on the road. So today's project is this tiny little box. You can all see this cute little box and we are going to paint it in an ombre blue effect. All right, so my blue is gonna be my base for all of the fabulous gilding waxes and all of the fabulous mousses that we're gonna paint next week, that we're gonna learn all about next week. And hey, FYI, if you tune in next week, then somebody next week is going to win a surprise. Can't tell you all the details now. You have to come back next week, join me next week. You might be able to win one of these before they come out, all right? Stay tuned. So. Here we go. Today, I have cleaned this piece with white lightning, like I do with all of my pieces. Proper prep is super important. And then I came in here with my boss, okay? So with my boss, I made sure to clear boss this piece. You can see that it's been previously painted. The finish isn't coming off at all. It's there, it's solid, it's not coming off, but I didn't want it to come through. And it's kind of a red color. I think this is a manufactured wood. So when things are unknown to me, when I don't really know what kind of wood they are, I don't really know how it's gonna to react to my paint, I always use Boss. Boss is going to be your blocking preventative for any a primer, for blocking odors, for blocking stains, for blocking tannins, anything that you want to stay away from, this is gonna help you do it. So this has had a coat of Boss in clear, which is this, I know it looks white, this is the clear. The white is super white. The clear is just like a little bit white. All right. So white lightning, cleaned, applied one coat of boss. And now we're going to hop into some paint. Who wants to see what we're going to paint today? Who wants to see the colors? Can you guess? Y'all know I don't do white or black. <laughs> so neutral to me is kind of like my favorite color, which is blues. I have got different shades of blue for this piece. Okay. So we have four colors on the floor and we're gonna mash them together. Me and my technical terms, we're gonna mash them. We're gonna blend them together, all right? So we have Antebellum Blue, we have Kudzu, we have Bunker Hill Blue, and we have Palmetto. So my plan for this is to do kind of like a beautiful blended blue so that when I come back next week, we can use 
all of these fabulous new mousses all over the place on this fancy pants little piece because why shouldn't it be fabulous? It's tiny, it's weird, I like weird furniture, and I always make them really fun and funky and fabulous. So if I get a piece that's already a little bit strange, I'm gonna go way off the deep end and make it even more strange. All right, let's begin, shall we? I think today we should start with Antebellum Blue, okay? Because I feel like Antebellum Blue is kind of like my fave blue, it's my jam. You can see a little blue piece behind me. I finished a secretary that we worked on last week. Do you remember my shades of blue blending from last week? That's how it turned out. That was the plan. It turned out really well. We did a blend last week of different colors of blues, um, a little bit of neutral colors, just to get a base for that beautiful decoupage paper that's hanging out back there. So blended blues are a good base for a lot of things, decoupage any transfers, any waxes, any mousses, anything that you've got going on, blue is a good base to get that done. Again, sorry, my, my dog has become my appendage <laughs> on my body. She's gonna hang out and deep sigh all over the place because oh, it's so rough being a dog, right? Rough life. All right, let's do this, let's do this. So we have got a different brush on the floor for each color. Four colors means four brushes. I just happened to grab what was close to me. We have a round large, we have a mini, and we have two medium flats, okay? All of these beautiful brushes are synthetic brushes from Dixie Bell. You can purchase them on the Dixie Bell website. I know that they've been coming in in little trickling ways and you can uh, grab them here and there when they do get them in stock. But if you were to click the link above my head, go to brushes, I know it says sold out. There's a drop down box that says be notified when they come back in stock do that and don't wait y'all don't wait because the other day um people were notified i took took a little time to tell my followers that the brushes were back in stock and they were back in stock for probably three hours <laughs> so each one of these brushes is a handmade item um you need to know that this this is like these are the tools for the artist this blending and the work that i do in general would not be possible without these amazing brushes so Take your time, grab a couple brushes, make sure you fill in that notification button so that when you do get them back in stock, you can grab a couple and you can paint some beautiful masterpieces too. All right, sound like a plan? I feel like you can't see enough. Can you see? Let's turn this even more. So I'm gonna take a bunch of blues, like I told you, and we're going to kind of create a darker to light shading. So that means I'm gonna take this antebellum blue and we're gonna put it on the edges. All right, I'm gonna paint this with the door closed and I'm not painting the hardware. There's actually handles that go on the side. I took them off, put them aside, and I'm gonna put them back on when I finish. But I'll come in after I'm done and paint this tiny little lip that's on the interior part of my table. I don't really wanna do it now. I just wanna lay down my base of colors and get them where they're gonna live. Like I always say, get them where they're gonna live so that you can check out the placement. Make sure that you like what you're doing because you need to kind of see how it's gonna look before you start to blend together. If you just jump right in and do the whole darn thing, you might decide that you don't like what you're doing. You wanna know that your placement is where you want it, right? It's kind of an important deal. So this lets you prep your placement. Got it? Good. Let me put my glasses back on so I can see. Oh, you think my dog is gorgeous? <laughs> you know what, she's one of two. I have, I have another one. So we have Stella and Luna. I have two boxers. Um, I did boxer rescue for many years here um, and in North Carolina. And when my daughter was finally old enough to get her own dog, Santa brought her a boxer puppy. <laughs> they will suck you in these boxers. They have very, very human fit like features and, and they just have the best attitudes. They're great dogs for kids. All right, no more boxer talk. This is the Dixie Bell channel, not the puppy channel. <laughs> she's she's going to hang out with me the whole day, though. All right, so let's move into the next color. We've done a little bit of antebellum blue, and I'm going to do a tiny bit of palmetto. A little bit of palmetto is going to be kind of my secondary darkest color because I want to move in from dark to light into the center of this piece because we're going to take stencils. Remember, next week, you gotta come back. You gotta come back and hang out with me next Wednesday. Um, we are going to be taking stencils and doing all of the fabulous, amazing new mousses next week so that you can check them all out before you go shopping at your local Dixie Bell retailer. Because November 5th, y'all, I know you've been waiting patiently. It's gonna start to happen. 
you're gonna see some fun mooses come out to play next week. I think all the girls are gonna be talking about them for the next couple weeks, they're hot, hot item. All right, so I've got a little bit of the palmetto over top of the antebellum blue. You can see how close these two colors are when you put them together on a piece. Like in the jar, they don't look like they're that close. They really don't. One looks totally green, one looks totally blue. But they really blend together well on a piece. They really, really do. I really like them together and they're easy to blend together. I'm always teaching everybody that um, it's important to think about these things when you're gonna be blending some colors because the closer they are together on the color wheel, the easier this job is going to be for you. Um, blending is not hard. You just have to think about it before you jump in. Don't jump in with like an orange and a purple because that's gonna be hard. Think about it, what's close on the color wheel. Blues, yellows, greens, you know, those things just mash together that little bit better. Okay, so now I have kudzu. So here's where the planning comes in. Kudzu is my lightest color that's down here on the floor. I have to decide how much of it I want because you're gonna see what I mean when I put this on the piece, okay? Kudzu is a lot lighter than these two colors. So I'm gonna start in the middle and lay it down. I just kind of want to see how light it's going to be compared to like what I'm doing. Do I want to bring more of this palmetto in? Do I want to bring it out? I don't think I want a ton of the kudzu and I have to paint around this hardware. FYI, it doesn't come off. Um, I don't know if I want a ton of it because it, it's kind of light, right? And we're going to be coming in with all of these waxes next week and doing stencils over top. I'm also gonna bust out the new chameleon waxes next week. You guys are gonna learn about all of the fun stuff. The chameleon waxes are great because they are iridescent. They're iridescent waxes. Exactly like the name says, they're, they're chameleon. They change color, which is really cool. Um, I actually use some on the piece behind me so that when you look at it in certain lights, the stencil that I, I did kind of like a ghost stencil, like a shadow stencil, and you can see it change color which is pretty neato. So I'm just going slow around this. I don't want to get it all over my hardware. I know I can get it off later. I'm just trying to be careful. Neat and tidy. And I'm not a neat and tidy kind of a girl. I'm super messy actually. Super messy. All right, so let me get this in here. And I can always come in later on with like a super duper tiny brush and make sure that I've got it around the edges. Okay, so now that I've got the kudzu on here, which is kind of a, a color that people don't use a lot, I can decide how much of it I want. I feel like I want less of it. So let's go back to the palmetto and put more. Because in my head I was thinking that the center would be lighter. I just don't want it that light. Like that's looking pretty light to me. So let's just change it a little bit. So when I lay down these initial colors, they all go on where they're gonna live, right? And then after I apply the second coat, I can come in and blend them and mash them together. Make sense? My puppy left me. She doesn't love me anymore. All right, so I know I'm not seeing tons of comments right now, but here's the deal. When I come back in and see them afterwards, I will be sure to answer all of your questions and comments. And Dixie Bell is on here as well. They are always available to help me. And I, oh no, there's smarty pants, girls on here and boys. There's always a couple people on here that know um, the answer and they like to hop in and help me out too, which is greatly appreciated. It's always nice. Let's turn the camera a little bit more so you can see. And we're gonna work on the side. So what we did on the front, we're gonna do the same thing on the side. There is holes here, which I've left because there are hardware pieces that are gonna come back onto the piece. It's a really weird little decorative chest. I think that in like the early 90s, these little chests were, were kind of popular and people just kind of put them as like, I don't know, fillers in the corner maybe, I don't know, in front of a fireplace maybe. Um, and now they're a little bit outdated. But once this becomes like magical and Mad Hatter and we do all the stencils, it's gonna be fabulous and you can put it anywhere. Besides, why wouldn't you wanna put this anywhere? It's gonna be so cool. We're gonna stencil it up. We're gonna add some would you bends. We're gonna do all of the fun things next week. Okay, so there's my antebellum. Let's take palmetto, which is my secondary color, remember? And lay it down. 
I learned on the front that I didn't want a ton of the kudzu. I just wanted a little bit. So that means I'm going to add the extra bit of the palmetto on the sides. I learned my lesson on the front, what I like and what I don't like. You love the color combination? Thank you. Blue to me is a neutral. Um, certain greens, blues, I feel like can be blended into really any decor. It doesn't have to be white. It doesn't have to be cream. It doesn't have to be boring. There's no rules. There's no rules in furniture painting. You can do what you like. All right, we'll do one more side. And I'm gonna have to do the back as well because who knows where this piece is gonna live, right? Could, could live anywhere. You might see the back. This could be a, like a fun little toy box, which would be absolutely amazing. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what it turns out like. But I won't do any of this off camera. This will be continued to be continued next week. I will leave it alone and we will work on it together so that you can see me zhuzh it up with all the stencils and all of the waxes. We're gonna get crazy in here, colorful. Let's see, this is actually paint. Somebody would have probably painted this. Let me see if I can turn it and I'll just put my hands in paint, of course. Let's see if I can open this little latch thing up and turn it around so that you can see where it's facing the camera. And then you can see. So I think at some point somebody would have like hand painted this on here, which is kind of funny. Isn't it funny how things go in cycles, y'all? Like this was the fashion what, 20 years ago in the 90s? This was like the cool thing to have, maybe even the 80s. People really like these flowers and it changes, right? People change their style. And that's what the fun thing is about paint, to change your ideas and change your mind and keep the same piece. There's nothing wrong with this box. It's totally solid. You can keep using it. You could do anything you want with this. It just might not fit your decor. I mean, burgundy, who likes burgundy? <laughs> Sorry, I don't like, if you like burgundy, I'm sorry. Burgundy to me is just not, I'm not a fan. So I would much rather paint things blue and fabulous and stripes and Mad Hatter. So we'll make it Melissa style versus whatever the style is, early 90s look. All right, so I'm going to, is it gonna leave a razor? You know what, you're, you're right, I did, hello. I did give it a slight sand to see if there was any bumps on here that were really sticking up and there wasn't there's some slight marks but remember we're going to be using a stencil over top of pretty much the entire piece i'm probably going to do some stripes with that fun um, new mousse because it's a very bold colorful mousse so we could do some fun stripes in blue and then we could do some chameleon wax over top of the blue and make it iridescent we're going to do all of the things y'all all of the things <laughs> you don't like burgundy either? No, I, I, it's burgundy in like 90s to me. Although forest green was super big in the 90s. My bedroom used to be like forest green and pink. Ugh. But now forest green's coming back in the decor world, y'all. I see it. It's happening. I see that forest green coming back in style. Everything has a time. Everything has a, I don't know, it has a time period that recycles. All things recycle. All fashion recycles. All this painting stuff recycles. I mean, back in the day, my grandma used to paint everything. She painted everything in her house pink and purple, which is fabulous. Go for it. If that's what you love, do it. Paint it pink and purple. Have fun. Um, and her house is fabulous. I mean, she loved it. It was pink and purple and everything was painted. And if you don't like it and you change your mind later on, paint over top of it. Do something else, right? You be the boss of you. Have fun with it. All right, so let's go back to the front and see if it's dry enough to start to do some blending. And yes, I'll do the top too, but I think I probably need to sit on my little stool. And then y'all will see my fuzzy socks <laughs> when I'm sitting on the stool. So we might wait for that part till be later. We'll see. Okay, so I also have on the floor Bunker Hill Blue. I didn't put it on because I think what's gonna happen to the Bunker Hill Blue is I'm, I'm barely gonna come down here and touch some edges. And that part isn't like happening yet. I need to blend the colors that are on here, making sure that I like what's happening, making sure that all of my wood is covered, that there's no wood peeking through. But since I primed this with boss, it's very easy to paint over top of a surface when you've already done boss. Your paint is going to adhere better. 
you're going to find that it just is an easier paint job to do if you've already used your boss and clear and if you decided to like to distress back which i'm not because ew burgundy um and if you were wanting to distress back say this was wood and you wanted to see wood using the boss and clear is still going to let you see that natural wood color so think about that when you're choosing your primer as well if i would have used boss and white and decided that i wanted to sand back some you would see that white so be aware that you need to think about these things a little bit before you um, get started with your projects. Think it through. Okay, so here's the part where we start to blend. I'm gonna do a little bit more of that kudzu in the middle, and then we're gonna pull it all together. The lighter your paint, the more paint you're going to use in your piece, okay? Darker colors cover that much better. They do, they just do. The darker colors, and I actually think I'm even gonna, sorry, I got ADD distracted here. I'm gonna actually even mousse over top of the hardware. So it's okay if I get a little bit of paint on there. Nobody freak out, don't yell at me. <laughs> My brain just went off in 20 different directions. What I was saying is, the darker your color, the less paint you're gonna use. So a color like this, this kind of lighter green, is going to take more paint to cover this area of wood then I don't have my tiny brushes. Then um, the darker colors. Now you can see how my brain works. This is how art works in my head. This is why I have 50 things on the go at one time because I'm literally talking to you, thinking about what I'm doing and wondering where like another paintbrush is in my head. This is the life of an artist. We are strange people. We get easily distracted <laughs> and our brains just wander. Wander off, y'all, wander off. Okay, so let's blend. On the floor, I have paper towel. You do not want a ton of paint on your brush when you're blending, all right? You want a minimal amount of paint. You're gonna go from painting your piece like this with your brush, see how far down my hand is? See this? See how far I'm holding this brush down? This tip is a very important tip for blending and for pulling colors together. And I've had people actually message me and tell me that this trick is what magically changed the ability for them to learn how to do blending. So from holding your brush like this and painting and getting those nice even strokes to holding your bristles, holding it up further on your brush like this is going to change the way that you control your paint, okay? You're going to grab it and you're going to feather your paint. It's gonna be a very light touch. I see Laura chatting about her grandma painting on, yeah, you know what, people always, there's gonna be somebody somewhere at all the time that says, don't paint that, oh my gosh, what are you thinking? But here's the deal, I have a chest that my grandma gave me. I love it, I love her. The chest was in terrible shape and it was wood and the color of wood is not going to work in my environment. That chest lived in my attic for almost five years until I got to the point where I was like, I want this thing to be around me. I want this chest to be a part of what I'm doing, a part of my life. So in order to do that, I needed to change it. And I used gel stain over top of repair work that I did to make that piece work in my house. And now I have an heirloom that I love because my grandma had it in her bedroom and now I have it in my bedroom and I think that is way more important than somebody that might write at the bottom of your post, don't paint that. <laughs> that's, that's my say on that. You paint what makes you happy. If it means that a piece is going to have a special place in your home and you're going to love it and appreciate it and remember somebody special, then I think you should paint whatever you want. Whatever you want, do it. And then show me, I wanna see your pictures because I think it's important to I don't know, just paint what makes your heart happy, right? And that chest now lives at the end of my bed, and every time I look at it, I can think of my grandma and think about how fabulous she is, right? So that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I'm just gonna drag this palmetto over a tiny bit. I don't even really have to blend the palmetto and the um, antebellum blue. They're so close already that really I'm just barely touching the areas where they touched. By barely touching those areas, I've already pulled it over enough to blend those two colors. 
it's going to be a little bit harder to blend this stuff in the middle but by blotting off your paintbrush and then using that that forward motion on your hand and a light touch you're able to blend these colors a little bit easier than you normally would if you want to add water because you feel like your paint is getting too dry you have a spray misting bottle filled with water close by you can spray your brush i don't suggest spraying the piece because if you spray this too hard or your mister gets stuck or something happens you're going to get water runs and then you're going to be sad because it's going to wreck your fabulous blending so spray your brush you can blot it off and let's just pull this together kudzu and palmetto are close i'm just going to keep bringing the palmetto in i'm using light light motions i'm blotting off on a paper towel and anyways even if this didn't turn out perfect i'm going to be putting stencils over top of it so it totally doesn't matter i don't think that people need to be as stressed out as they get about what they're doing on their furniture this is not a manufactured piece this is a melissa piece which means that it's probably not going to be perfect it's probably not going to be exactly perfect all the time but here's the deal i don't want it to be perfect why should it be perfect that would be boring nothing in life is perfect i'd much rather have something be interesting than perfect in my world anyways all right so i don't even think I'm going to use my brush that had the kudzu on it because then I'm going to be depositing more of that kudzu color on the piece and I don't want a ton of it. I just want this slight little shadow, this tiny little bit of kudzu in the middle making that fun little glow. So yay, good. I'm done with the front. What do you think? Pretty cute, right? Pretty cute. I put my glasses on and see whatever I say and have a quick drink. It's getting smoky hot in here. Let's see, you do need to keep practicing. You know what, how can you know how you're gonna do if you don't keep practicing and learn how to get better? You can only get better by practicing. I mean, practice what we preach. I have a sixth grader that sits in here and does her homeschooling and virtual schooling and you know what, if I have to tell her to practice something, review, think about these things before you start, why shouldn't we have to do that too, right? Has to, has to work that way. All right, so remember I put the bunker hill on the bottom? Let's add a tiny bit, not a lot. I'm even gonna blot off what I put on the brush. Let's see what we can do down here. Let's bring in a tiny bit. I didn't even put this on the original color. This is, I almost sat in that. This is just the tiniest bit off the lid just brushed in I was like the bottoms of my pieces to be like a little bit darker just a bit so we're gonna use a tiny little bit bunker hill right there in the corners darken it up a bit that's cute right super cute you get it let's see I can't see any hearts or comments yet. Do you like this? Is it going well? Do you love it so far? This is easy for you guys to do. I feel like this is a finish, all close in the color family, right? You're not working super hard to blend these colors because they're easily blended. This is not a, not a far jump, these colors. These are all super close together. So you're able to just pull them together easy peasy and get this magical glowy finish this is looking like a treasure chest to me now i'm liking it i'm liking this so remember we're going to be adding stencils stripes all of the waxes and all of the new mousses next week because you're going to want to learn how to use all these let's do some more blending shall we we've got two more sides to do i'm not covered in paint enough we can't be done yet <laughs> i have to have more paint all over me all right, so same thing goes on here. You're gonna need that kudzu in the middle, kind of as that second coat, because 
it's the lighter color. The deeper, darker colors are not going to need a full second coat. They're just not, they really don't. They cover kind of like that one coat really easily, really well. So I'm just gonna add that little bit more of palmetto, making sure that my paint is gonna be a little bit damp for blending. And then I'm gonna blot it off on my paper towel and we're gonna pull these together. Can you see? I feel like you guys are up a little bit high. Oh goodness, I almost sat in my mic. All right, so I'm gonna keep taking the same brush. This is the palmetto brush. See how far down my hand moved? See how that changed? And we're just gonna pull these colors together. So if you're new to blending, why don't you try this color combination? Making it easy on yourself, because I've now showed you the placement, I've showed you the way to blend them, and you're seeing how easy this is. This is a good neutral color. This is, yes, blue, a little bit of green, but this is not like an overpowering red or an overpowering pink. I find that these blues are still nice and neutral and kind of match everything. So maybe try these colors together and see how they work for you. Especially if you think that blending is hard or you haven't grabbed the hang of it yet, you can do this. You can do these colors because I just showed you how easy it is sitting on the floor in my fuzzy socks and messy paint. It's not hard. I know you can do this. Try this color combo. It's fast. It's neutral still, I feel, because I think blue is just like a nice basic. And it's not, it's not hard. I think that you can do this. So I think that if you are new to blending and you're thinking about it too much and you want to try this, this is a good start. This is a good place to start. And you can always send me a message. I'm always around to help. I help people all the time. I like it. All right, let's do the kudzu in the middle. And then the palmetto around the edges. I think out of all the colors that I paint, blue might be the one that I do kind of the most. It's just, when you look at my Instagram as a feed, you're gonna see like wild and crazy colors all together, and then you see a lot of blue. I don't know, it's just one of those things that's my favorite colors to do. So technically this is like a blue-green mix, but it's still blue. I didn't even re-wet my brush, you guys. I'm using the same brushes, that light hand, and yo, I see a hair. So now I have to fix that. Job hazard. <laughs> Puppy dog hairs, my hair. Okay. Now, you know what we didn't do to the sides that we did to the front? We didn't add any of those little peaks of the Bunker Hill. So let's go back to the Bunker Hill brush blot it off and add a tiny bit of those peaks of blue in the corner. Just a touch, just a, a barely, barely touch, just to give it that tiny little bit of depth. So let's go back to the other side. Things get hard to turn around, y'all. There, let's add that blue. And then, we will take a break and I'm gonna open up all my waxes so that you can see all the new colors that are coming to you. And we'll talk about what we're gonna do next week together. Cause I'm not gonna do this piece other than finishing the back and the top. I'm not doing anything else to this piece until you guys are back with me next week. And we'll do it together. We'll do this piece from start to done. All right, so that everybody can learn. And I see a spot that I need to fix. So let me gently fix that. That light touch, y'all, that light touch is the magic to blending. 
Okay, perfection. What do we think? Super cute, right? Super, super cute. I'm really liking this color combo and this kind of like down under the sea combination that's happening. All right, you love it. Thank you, Sherry. So now, next week when we come back, because you're coming back next week, right? You're gonna come back and hang out with me. We're gonna do some would you bend and some stencils and all of the mousse so that you can see how it works. I will paint the back with the hardware on the same as I painted the front with the hardware. This can just come off. When this dries and I come in here with a wet wipe, I can get this off easily, but I'm gonna be doing um, mousse on there too. I wanna keep this color because I couldn't get this off and there's actually hardware that goes on either side, but we're gonna be touching it with gold and touching it with all of the things. It's gonna be super duper sparkly. Let me show you what we're gonna do next week so that you can get ready. Because hey, you almost have enough time to grab these colors and join me if you want to paint next week. It's gonna be fabulous, fabulous. So remember the colors used today, kudzu in the middle, palmetto, antebellum blue, and the tiniest little peak of Bunker Hill around the corners, all right? Yes, I'll do the top. Yes, I'll do the back. All of that stuff is going to happen. And then this piece will be ready for us to play with next week. Next week, we are going to add some would you bend moldings, all right? So this is going to go in bright, shiny moonshine metallics right there. After I get the moonshine metallics on there in gold, we're gonna paint it, then we're gonna attach it. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Then we're still gonna even put more on here. We're still even gonna do more, more things. I am going to show you all of the new waxes, okay? So Dixie Bell is releasing new waxes and new mousses. The new mousse is coming out November 5th. It is called Gemstone Mousse, all right? Gemstone Mousse is a water-based product. This water-based product is, it comes in a little jar and it needs to be really, really stirred up well, okay? When you open it up, you're gonna see that it's liquid inside. And this mousse, you're gonna to wanna to get something small. I like to use this little paint spatula. And you're gonna mix, 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 mix. You're gonna make sure that's whipped, basically. You want this to be like a, a mousse consistency. It's got a ton of sparkle. Let's put some on me since this piece is not ready yet. It's got a ton of sparkle. It's got a ton of shine. And you're gonna be able to do things like basically paint, shine, and shimmer on your piece. The color that I just touched and put on top of my arm is copper, okay? So the colors that are going to be released in the new gemstone line, copper, there is obviously gold, and the new gold is going to be called golden gem. All right, we also have black. Again, these are not labeled. I don't know the proper names, but these are all the new gemstone mousses. So copper, gold, black, silver. The silver is crazy pigmented, you all. This silver is like the most silver of all of the things. It's really, really cool. Yeah, you can put the wood you bend before you paint or after you paint, totally up to you. Since I'm gonna be painting this pure gold, I'm gonna paint it gold on the floor, then we're gonna stick it on here. You can do it either way. You can totally use Would You Bend in any way possible. So then you also have a beautiful blue, which actually has a green undertone, so we're gonna use a lot of it on this piece because how good is that gonna match? So good, so good. And then you have a red. So basically, the colors that were available in the waxes, are the colors that are going to be available in the new mousse, okay? These are water-based, eco-friendly, there's really no smell. They're really fun to use with a paintbrush to apply or your finger, okay? You can see how shiny it is, it's super shiny, super pigmented. So next week, we're gonna get out the new stencil. This is one of the stencils that Dixie Bell will be releasing in, I believe, the next couple weeks as well. You can see how well loved this is because I've used the heck out of it. I've used it so often. I really, really like it. Next week, we are going to do stencils with the mousse. We are going to apply Would You Bend? And then, and then, I'm not done. Don't go anywhere. And then we are going to apply some of the new chameleon waxes, all right? This is your sneak peek right now into the new waxes. 
that are coming soon. Not as soon as the mousse. You can get the mousse first. These are going to be second, okay? We have three colors in the chameleon wax. Lilac, cactus, and apricot. In the jar, they look orange, pink, and green. And when you put these pieces, when you put this on your piece, it's going to become a holographic design where it goes from this kind of orangey color to pink. It's gonna change. It becomes iridescent and it becomes changeable. So it's almost like you're gonna get a shadow effect. I'm going to apply these to my piece next week as well, along with the stencil. And we're going to use all the mousse, all the mousse next week. So please come back next week and hang out with me here in the Dixie Bell Paint page at 3 p.m. Same time, same place. We are going to finish this box together and you better come back because Dixie Bell is going to be giving away to one lucky viewer on that live a gemstone mousse. All right. You need to be here with me and watching to win. So come hang out with me next week. We will play with some paint. We will play with all of the mousses. I will use my fingers. I will use a paintbrush. I'm going to show you all the ways you can use it. One of the things that I've learned I've liked to do with this mousse is actually apply it and then spray it with water. And because this is a water-based product, it moves, it's gonna drip, and it's gonna be lovely. It's gonna be amazing for shading. All right, there you go. I hope you um, will come back, week, come back next week and join me. All right, that's it for me. My name is Melissa, girl who likes to talk, <laughs> and uh, I am Dixie Bell's newest brand ambassador. I am here live, Dixie Bell Paint Page, every Wednesday at 3 p.m. EST. I'm saving this piece for you, so you better come back and watch, all right? Take care, everybody. Have a great day, and don't forget to follow me on my page, The Top Drawer RVA. I've linked it above my head. Bye. Take care.